welcome to the Delivery Manager Daily. This is episode 34. Uh, it's Friday the 30th, uh, 2022, so we're getting to the end of the year. And hopefully you've had a great Christmas and are getting ready for New Year celebrations. But I wanted to just do a very small video on what Agile is. I'm often constantly doing Agile 101 um, kind of teaser or, or training sessions to explain Agile in a way uh, that people understand and I still think today it's often misaligned and miscommunicated and by no means am I a sole expert and I have some practical hands-on kind of sort of experience with uh, being agile within a project and delivering software but also helping businesses be agile and nimble within their operating model and processes and how they do their business and there's a big difference between the two and they're often kind of put together and and, and sort of uh, all put into one box. So I just wanted to I explain what Agile means to me. It's a question often asked at interview. It's a question if you're getting into delivery management you might be asked yourself, you know, what does Agile mean to you? And I talk about it a little bit away from the academic kind of textbook and the, the manifesto and the principles and I, I talk about what Agile is is means so if you're a graduate or you wanted to get into uh, delivery and you ask this question this may be useful and I'll try and back it up with some kind of sketches that I do when I help kind of do talks and things to students but also um, talking about it in my own imitable way right so you're gonna comment so agile's not this and agile's this and you don't know what you're talking about but in the 10 years or so that I've been doing this um, this is what agile means to me and I, I think is a reasonable lens to with which to look at it so let's jump in so what do we mean by agile well, well, firstly, we have to understand there's a separation between using the agile uh, delivery principles for software development and using agile techniques and practices within the workplace to do things a little bit better. And there's a huge difference between those two. So let's just talk about uh, agile in terms of software development. If you find yourself working on a project and um, you are delivering software and software only, and that is all you're doing, that's a classic candidate for agile software delivery. And this is the notion of doing things in increments, uh, releasing value as early as uh, possible, uh, making sure there's no surprises along the way, and using an inspect and adapt loop, usually a framework like Scrum, putting small self-organizing teams together uh, to deliver a piece of software. That software should be uh, centered around the user and user needs, regardless of what you're building, and you uh, govern and manage the whole end-to-end -end process using agile events, such as retrospectives, uh, show and tells, daily stand-ups, that kind of thing. And that's the textbook kind of agile, uh, in a nutshell, what that is. And if you're on a software project, the principles and, and the, the, the kind of framework that agile is and supports and everything within it, whether you're gonna use Scrum or Kanban or anything in between works with software. The problem is that when that's then morphed into operational processes and, and making teams work better in organizations that do more than just deliver software, or maybe even they don't deliver software at all, but you're trying to bastardize kind of the, the agile principles and manifesto into a business, um, that's often where the murky world of not only consultancy exists, and I'll talk about that in the last uh, video, so go and watch that, episode 33, um, but also it's more difficult for people to get their head around uh, of what Agile is. So we've talked about software development and Agile, and you can go and read the Scrum Guide, and I'm personally a big fan of Nexus, which kind of scales Scrum a little bit, and I find that perfect for almost everything, frankly, on the projects that I'm on. And you can go and read about that, and there'll be some links all over the video as I talk about this. Um, I want to talk about what Agile means to organisations when, as a consultant, we say Agile, and if um, I was asked, what does Agile mean to me? Um, Agile to me means several things. It means if I'm developing software, it means the things I've just said, releasing value early, working in increments, uh, utilizing self-organizing teams, probably following a scrum framework to do light, quick, user-centered uh, iterations of value and outcome uh, based on quick releases a solid DevOps pipeline with everything you'd expect, including automation, a good culture, end-to-end -end release, um, tooling to make sure that code can be tested and assured and released in a safe and reliable way, 
And that's what Agile means to me from a software delivery perspective. From a cultural and operational and process perspective, it means things such as making sure that all teams have a vision and a combined mission and vision and understand why they exist. And we talk about some of this in the community of a practice video, which is episode 32, which you might want to go and watch too. But Agile for me means teams understand where they're going, what they're doing, that there is clear frictionless processes to help and aid communication. So I've often found that Kanban works in organisations as a, a visual planning tool, right? A fairly lightweight planning tool that starts to get people thinking in a more agile way. Quick anecdote, uh, I saw an organisation with 12 siloed teams and each team was doing mission critical work and they would pass work from one team to another and each team would complain that the teams either side of them weren't taking into account uh, sort of um, needs or up or downstream dependencies and the work kind of ground to a halt and by the time it got to the 11th or 12th team it was wrong, it was inaccurate and they were hemorrhaging uh, millions of pounds worth of, of money kind of redoing that work. Um, between them all they didn't talk, there were lots of emails and there were lots of um, kind of nondescript workshops but outside of that they didn't really know what they were doing each day. So we introduced just visual Kanban. We got some whiteboards, which I don't know, you can't see, but on the, on the left of me here, there's a massive whiteboard. And we got these on easels between each team. And we used a simple version of Kanban. Uh, up next, uh, in progress, and done. And we got everyone to swarm around each board in each team every day. And there was a lot of puzzled looks and people scratching their heads going, I'm not sure what the difference is between this and the notes that I've got in my notepad. Over the first week, people started to see people collaborating a little bit more and they wanted to get in on that because they had a bit of fear of missing out. By week two, people started to understand the notion of, um, you know, taking a physical post-it note, uh, something like that, and attributing a piece of work or a task to that, something tactile and tangible that you can touch and feel, and watching it move from the board from left to right to actually indicate progress helped eliminate work in progress and overloading of work on certain people too and the visual element of it meant that anyone could walk around and see what each team was doing by the time we got to week six or week seven they'd completely changed the way that they work and everyone was collaborating a lot more and what we found was entirely organically they completely self-organized was that um they started to be able to look at upstream and downstream dependencies and plan for those within the work and that was just implementing kanban now for me that's agile does Kanban represent the full spectrum of what Agile is? Absolutely not. But if someone was to ask me what Agile means from a, an operational and process perspective, that would be an example that I use. I think visual planning is really important and we're visual creatures as human beings and often um, we struggle with email and long form text. We don't read, we have a tendency of skimming over stuff. So visual planning is really, really helpful and I thoroughly recommend if you're getting into the world of Agile and you're building up a, a digital toolkit of stuff, that you use tools like Miro or Microsoft Whiteboard, which is what I use to do these drawings, or anything that you feel comfortable with, to put together visual aids and when you're explaining yourself, talk visually and make sure that you get your point across using pictures, no matter how simple, it can be really beneficial to get a very complex thing across to people and make sure that they understand and I did a blog post about using sort of digital whiteboards and drawing and it's that notion of if you're talking to someone verbally you might think that they understand what you're saying but if you draw it there's a much higher chance that they'll understand what's in your head and what you're trying to convey so be confident and use these tools that are available to help you visually plan and get stuff across and I actually think that is a key part of Agile too in terms of clear communication and aiding collaboration and in this particular case I'm a big fan of using pictures to do that. Another thing that Agile means to me, and I think it is part of the manifesto, is culture and how people work together. So often now we work in a really kind of siloed and hybrid, if not entirely remote world with people at the end of Zoom or Teams on a screen in a little box. Um, but that doesn't really help true collaboration and human beings seek out kind of that water cooler moment, getting together. That's just how we are, whether we whether we know or not, it is what we what we uh, crave often. Um, and we're struggling, I think, as teams. And what I see as a consultant is that being uh, compounded even more with everything that's going on with the economy and sort of coming off the back of a two-year lockdown. So I think it's really important that leaders 
and whether that's an agile scrum master or whether that's a project manager or delivery manager that's leading an agile based project that you help to instill a healthy culture and that can be anything from creating safe spaces on a video conferencing session for people to drop in um, permanently on like a Google Hangouts is much better than a mandated or diarised kind of event so we all get Zoom fatigue and you'll have heard that term but actually just popping on I think Slack now does like a huddle type function similar to Google Hangouts you can use that and we've used that in a project that I'm involved with and we just leave that on all day and people can drop in in a hybrid or remote world that can be really helpful it's a little bit more organic than just turning up to a zoom call at a certain time so culture can be that culture can be actually making the effort to get together and bringing people together i really do think that good leaders and good delivery managers whether it's at the start of your project or periodically uh, to retrospective say bringing people together physically and actually taking on the cost and the expense and the logistics of bringing people together. Um, there was a recent example on the same project that I'm thinking of. In one day we went to a client site or it was actually the vendor um, but we met the client and the vendor and we probably got more practical work done in the few hours that we were together physically than we did all week virtually and that's not to say that uh, virtual and remote teams can't work but there's so much more work involved in making them work um, over just bringing people together so make sure in your project and I do believe that this falls within the agile kind of construct you're bringing people together regularly physically um, I talked about DevOps earlier and I don't want this talk to be about DevOps particularly but just it forms part of the kind of agile spectrum and landscape and often I see people in interviews kind of struggle I ask the question so talk to me about your approach to DevOps and talk to me about it either from a technical perspective or a cultural perspective or any that you're more comfortable with and a lot of people struggle so again I as a delivery manager look to make sure that on a project where we're delivering software we're delivering code that technically the right people have the things that they need to build an environment to allow them to release software regularly so that means some kind of um, developer pipeline that means the right uh, development environments, tools, access to licenses, access to all the software that they need, building tools, version and, and repository tools, whether that's Git or Jenkins or any automation tools, uh, making sure that they've got access to the environments, whether that's Azure or AWS, making sure the testing is in place, automations in place, that code can be branched, it can be documented, and um, everyone knows a standard way of working right that from a technical perspective very lightweight right because I'm not a DevOps engineer that's the technical element of DevOps and as a delivery manager and I would expect my delivery managers to talk about that from a technical perspective and making sure that those things are in place the classic anecdotes of course are you, you land on a project and your developers are waiting three weeks for a Visual Studio license or access to the environment or they haven't got security clearance that kind of thing that's DevOps right that's a part of DevOps and as a delivery manager I expect to be to some degree responsible for that there's also the cultural element as well to make sure that the organization understands that it's not that the software engineers build something and then they throw it over the wall to get tested and then it gets thrown back over the wall to the engineers and they just don't work together and the combat's done over a JIRA ticket or an Azure DevOps ticket. So culturally, it's bringing maybe the test and assurance folk into the development meetings or it's bringing the developers and the engineers into the user design and research meetings to make sure that everyone's on the same page of what's being built and why and that breaks down that wall when we talk about the DevOps silo to make sure that as well as all the technical stuff being done um, operationally and organizationally DevOps is thought about and working as one rather than individual tech teams which is often why software projects kind of go awry because even in an agile world a product's being built and then weeks of hemorrhage fixing kind of bugs or misunderstood features all that kind of stuff also more practical kind of what does agile mean to me so we talk about the structure of a project and as a delivery manager you know you're not often as mercy to a gantt chart as you may have been 10 15 years ago working on a waterfall project so a lot of the work that i do with either students or delivery managers who are learning 
it's how do you structure your project in a way that kind of makes sense for Agile. And I use a tried and tested way every time as a starting point, whether I'm using Azure DevOps or Jira. And it's this notion of firstly, understanding the scope of work, the commercial milestones, and realistically, that's more likely to be a time and material kind of waterfall gate based type of project structure. I don't mind that. I'm happy to work from a Gantt chart, but in between those stage gates, you can be agile or a bit of a blend. And I think that's where the sweet spot is with the type of agile that I'm talking about. So I need to understand the delivery milestones and the expectations of the client. And typically what I will do is create epics and using kind of agile terminology and epic is a, a similarly themed bucket of stuff in relation to one thing that you've grouped together at a high level. These are usually big outcomes, big pieces of value release. And I like to align my epics to the contract or outcomes in particular. Then underneath that, within the epics, are the kind of key user stories that are more uh, specific to getting to the outcome. And then underneath that, you've got the tasks that come from the user stories uh, that are more granular. And these should be following either a standard kind of user story format, which we won't go into because this isn't really an agile coaching video, um, but I'll put a link somewhere so you can read about that more. And also recognising that not every ticket has to follow the Agile user story format. Plenty of projects, it's not just about delivering software. It might be setting up a physical building or installing some infrastructure or server cabinets and things. And obviously that's a task. That's a task that needs to be done. But that can't be estimated in the same way as writing a, an API. So it's really important that you recognise as an Agile delivery manager that certain tasks can't be agilized, right? They're just tasks that need to be done. And you have to be able to ingest them into your project and deal with them. So I think that notion of aligning epics to business outcomes and milestones for me tends to work and helps to bridge the gap between waterfall and kind of agile and then I do my best to align user stories underneath those epics um, to kind of start thinking about what the tasks underneath might be. And what I'll do is I'll draw this out on a whiteboard before I even get to a, a task planning tool like Jira or Azure DevOps because um, often you'll want to change stuff or that structure won't work for your particular project. And the advice that I'm giving here is really simple and straightforward. And the reason that I'm doing that is because if you're an expert already, you'll listen to this and go, this is totally superficial and, and too high level. But actually, after years and years of doing it, I don't find myself needing to get into the, the weeds of pure software delivery and complex Monte Carlo simulations or complex estimation of, of tickets. It's always kind of knowing the broader stuff and being able to do it again and again reliably. So that's why I'm talking about it at this particular level. But I totally get that, you know, the depth and, and the detail of Agile is, is like that. And I'm talking at this high level, but you know, it's my video. And then finally, and I talk about this in episode uh, 32 when we talk about uh, communities of practice and leadership generally, right, is be present, um, take accountability for the team, protect the team, but make sure you're a clear communicator so everyone knows what they need to do. Make sure you set a really clear mission and vision and do as you say you'll do and do what you say you'll do or whatever the other way around is, but just be straight and direct and be that clear uh, transparent leader that often is the maker or breaker between projects that I've seen and as I've gotten better at that bit and again I'll use the same uh, example project that I'm thinking about um, I'm in effect doing myself out of a job and enabling the team to get on with stuff giving them hopefully as clear as possible um, view and guide of what they need to do and why, giving them access to all the information that they need to do the thing and setting it out as clearly as possible as to here's what we're trying to achieve for the client, can you do that? And then letting them get on with it. And in this case, uh, I've been away, that team's worked for two weeks to build the starting of a digital product and I'm coming back into the project, probably not needed outside of kind of admin and signing off timesheets and expenses and that kind of thing. And that's exactly, I think, what a good delivery manager can get to. Uh, there'd be points in my career over the years where my ego would have took over and I'd have wanted to have done something substantial or something visible. But actually, I do so much stuff. I've learned that just enabling the team to do their thing almost making me redundant, that's success in itself, and I get a lot of kind of pleasure out of that. So if I can remove friction and let them get on with it because they're the experts, that's also a big part of what I think Agile is. So that's a very lightweight 
overview of what agile means to me both from a a kind of manifesto perspective and actually putting it into practice and these are some of the things that I talk to delivery managers about and students day in day out so this is the start of what agile means to me and hopefully you'll have taken away some things from this and gone on to do further reading um, but do follow me on Twitter at Mario DC uh, thanks for watching and if it's uh, nearly new year where you are happy new year